All right. Good evening. Good evening, folks. Um, here we are once again on the Ujima Awa. I am Michael Tekken Strode of the Colonet Collaborative. Um, and I'm in the wrong scene, so I'm going to get out of that, that scene. Um, yes, welcome. Welcome. My name is Michael Tekken Strode of uh, the Colonet Collaborative, founding coordinator. Uh, the Colonet Collaborative is Chicago's uh, currently only um, time-based service and skills exchange, otherwise known as a time bank. And um, yeah, and we are playing host to the Ujima Hour, which is your uh, monthly segment, you know, monthly informal um, conversation on Black social and solidarity economy, um, intimate and informal conversation. Ultimately, uh, we are curious here at the Cold Nut Collaborative. Uh, I personally am very curious about what is happening in the Black social and solidarity economy uh, throughout the U.S. And, you know, because it helps to have these conversations with one another as we are building projects that may um, be difficult to understand, may be hard for people to grasp, you know, uh, in term conceptually, uh, it's beneficial to have these conversations with each other uh, and, and just kind of talk about what the arc is in terms of how these projects develop. Uh, so that's what I'm here to do. Um, I thank you all for being here with me. I thank you all for indulging my curiosity uh, each month. And I hope that you are gathering something from it. Um, I hope that it has been beneficial to you. I hope that you, um, you you feel connected to some of these projects. And ultimately, I really hope that you are contacting these people because uh, the, 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 the connection means uh, is, is, is maybe for naught if we are not able to establish and build relationships between initiatives, between projects, um, you know, be, because ultimately we want to not only have uh, connections through other initiatives, through things like the New Economy Coalition, through things like the U.S. Solidarity Economy Network, but ultimately we should have our own networks that we are building uh, between projects, between initiatives. And um, to that end, what does Ujamaa mean? Ujamaa in Swahili means familyhood. Um, certainly, you know, um, every, every uh, year we talk about cooperative economics in the context of Kwanzaa, but ultimately inside of um, the context of of the, the language, Ujama means familyhood, and and what is family? But you know, uh, a series of, of relationships that we are building, uh, whether those relationships are biological or whether those relationships are chosen, um, we we are all ultimately building family in the spaces um, that we have have chosen for ourselves, and and the Ujama hour is really you know about highlighting um, the places where you have chosen. Uh, to build those relationships um, and, and to kind of expand your conception of what an economy means. Um, I had the benefit recently of doing a presentation for the Symbiosis Network. For those who are unfamiliar with Symbiosis, um, it is a federation of projects that are municipalist in nature, meaning that they are trying to build deep democratic power at local communal, communal levels or community levels. Um, and so um, I had an opportunity to to do a presentation to um, some of the members of the Symbiosis Network that really talked about the relationship between solidarity economy and dual power. Um, and because I, um, you know, wrestle with them a lot around that phrase, that phrase dual power, um, I, I, I won't try to kind of conceptualize how they talk about dual power, but I really will talk about how I think about it. And, and really, it's about how can we make sure that communities um, have the, the, the level of self-determination that allows them to challenge uh, developments, um, you know, that, that allows them to challenge changes, that allows them to challenge the, the, the dynamic of what happens in their community. Um, and so, you know, that, that is how I would frame dual power and, and how I relate the solidarity economy to that um, really is just about the fact that we, are, we live the economy every day, as I've, I've called out before from movement generation, um, so we are the experts that we need. Um, we do not need economists to explain the economy to us. We have the expertise. We have the knowledge. And uh, we can gather the research for ourselves about what, the, what we need to have done and what changes we need to see in this world. And so ultimately, the Ujima Hour is tracking people who are doing that, right? Tracking people who are grasping uh, at that self-determination for themselves. Um, and for others, you know, um, so so I really thank you all for, for being here with me and with our guest. Um, if you want to tell other people about this broadcast, um, there is a, a wonderful uh, bit.ly link that will take you to some of those past shows. So uh, be sure to um, go to bit.ly forward slash Ujama with a capital U 
and the capital FB at the end. So uh, bit.ly uh, forward slash Ujima um, FB. Uh, so yeah, feel free to go ahead and share that link. That will get everyone to the past shows. Um, we do broadcast every month uh, on Facebook. Um, so all of those shows uh, are archived. We've got a, a stellar roster of folks who have, we have spoken to over the over the past three years. Yeah, 2018 was sort of the, the beginning of the series of broadcasts. Um, so yeah, go back and, and, and listen to what uh, Renee Hatcher and Stacey Sutton had to say. Go back and listen to what Christina Brown and Jerry Keep, um, you know, down there in Texas are talking about. Um, go back and, and hear what uh, La Tierra Pipus is talking about um, of Womanist Working Collective. Um, they're just a really stellar lineup of folks who are doing um, really hard work. You know, it's difficult work to to sometimes work on on initiatives um, that that we are um, trying to advance, trying to move forward. Um, but we are really committed to making sure that that these models are accessible and available um, to Black communities, to the folks that that we uh, have have that we are aligned with, that we are are in network with. Um, and yeah, and I, I, and so um, these are folks that, that are certainly deserving of support. And, you know, I look forward to broadcasting and connecting with more. Um, also, uh, if you are trying to figure out um, where you can find more about the Colonet Collaborative, um, feel free to visit our website, www.colonetcollab.org. There on the ticker, um, You'll find all of the research that we have done in terms of time banking. Um, we are, are very committed to time banking as a model and time banking as a practice. Um, and, and so ultimately, we, we, we want people to understand what we have gathered around time banking, because if you want to cultivate time banking wherever you are, um, we, we don't want you to have to go through some of the headaches that we have found um, or, or, you know, to, to kind of be as, as lost as we were at one time. Uh, certainly, you know, we, we give credit at all times to um, Cowrie Collective and Chinieri Ote in St. Louis for inspiring the model of, the, of time banking that we um, are engaging here in Chicago. And we've got some interesting things on the horizon. Um, so, so right now uh, we are looking at or not looking at you know i mean tomorrow evening is the deadline for the letter of inquiry for the field foundation because we ultimately want to expand the offers and needs market here in chicago um the offers and needs market which i've spoken about before is that model that the post growth institute um uh, developed you know which really looks at getting groups in a room and doing a really rapid fire you know um time bank practice to 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 dig up, you know, what are the things that people are looking to offer um, to others in exchange for time or whatever sort of means of transaction that, that they want to apply to it? Um, and then what are the things that people need? So really getting people inside of a room, inside of a space, in conversation with each other around these offers and needs very quickly um, so that you can disrupt some of the things that cause us to pause when we are thinking about what we have to offer, when we are thinking about what we are skilled at, um, you know, I, I used to, um, I used to actually say that I could not teach fermentation. Um, I've been doing, you know, fermentation for, I mean, half a decade at this point. Um, but there, there was a time when I said, I can't teach fermentation. I just picked it up. Right. I, I don't really know about it. Um, but you know, you, you don't know how much you know about a thing until you begin to explain it to someone else until they see the passion that you bring to that thing. Um, so ultimately, these offers and needs market really disrupt the pathways that cause us to pause and say, you know what, I don't know if I'm ready to share that. No, go ahead and share it. You know, if, you know, and, and I, I know that this has been said before in terms of um, in terms of thinking about time banking. If you know three piano keys, you probably know three more keys than I know, um, which is very true. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I can certainly teach you something about fermentation and you can teach me those three or four piano keys that you might know, um, you know, and, and that's that's how we build up uh, our, ourselves, build up our acumen and build relationships, which is ultimately what time banking is about. So I'm really looking forward, you know, to um, again, you know, working possibly with the Field Foundation and pitching towards that letter of inquiry to, you know, really think at how we expand the offers and needs market into more spaces here in the city, here in Chicago, um, connect with more community organizations and get them to use this as a regular part of their meeting practice. Because ultimately, you know, it's not just about this sort of one-time thing where we are just dropping in 
and having the offers and needs market once, it needs to become a regular part of practice because ultimately that's how people connect it to time banking and that's how we can actually get people to engage with the platform better if they have a better understanding that, hey, the platform is just here so that we can document some of these transactions, some of these trades, some of these exchanges that we are attempting to make with one another. Um, so uh, I, I uh, look out for that. You know, we'll, we'll certainly have more information and uh, definitely visit the um, Colonet Collaborative Facebook page um, for more information to that effect. Um, and of course, there is the Facebook page, um, the Colonet Collaborative there on Facebook at Colonet Collab. Um, so feel free to go ahead and, and, and you know, uh, like and, and, ch and connect to that page. Um, we are consistently posting things that relate to the solidarity economy, um, that relate to our, our, uh, my work with the U.S. Solidarity Economy Network as a board member, um, my work with the New Economy Coalition Educators Working Group um, as, as, as someone who is trying to build my facilitation acumen in service of um, these, these, um, these models. So... Yeah, you know, um, we, we, we like to kind of share other people's content. We like to make sure that, you know, people are connecting to all of these different initiatives, all of these projects, uh, because we see them. We, we, we feel that the, that the dots are connected here, right? We feel that these things are interconnected. Um, and that was something that we, we, we brought to the conversation with Symbiosis, um, which is really that, you know, the solidarity economy um, is not about sort of us kind of... Um, trying to bring revolutionary politics over to this these this other place that doesn't have it but it's ultimately about the revolution that people already have in, in their own neighborhood the sort of the, the connections that are already happening there the connections that people are making the the, the sort of radical endeavors people are already moving on um, how can we bring those to the surface how can we attend to those connections and help people see the connections between them um, so you know that that's that's where we are that's what we are working on um and and you know what are you working on uh feel free to let us know in the comment section if there are, are interesting endeavors um that you are engaging right now um that you you want to kind of let folks know about um we will try to make sure that we communicate those out and and if you um are someone you know who who has a project has a program that has not been covered on the ujama hour um we're only about 30 segments in, so there's a lot that we didn't cover. Um, then, you know, you should certainly make yourself known to us. Um, we, we, we are not shy. Um, I, I'm working on the, the 2021 season right now. Um, so I'm really looking forward to connecting to other folks for 2021. Um, you know, I've got some folks that, that are in my eyesight, you know, certainly um, Metro Atlanta Mutual Aid. Um, you know, want to see what's happening there. And, you know, I, I missed the opportunity to cover a uh, member of that um, organization um, as part of the World Social Forum. Uh, so I really look forward to kind of getting someone else from uh, Metro Atlanta Mutual Aid on. So we'll look forward to that. Um, and uh, who else am I targeting? Oh, um, I'm Eric Allen, you know, and, and uh, Urban Growers Collective here locally. Uh, our Urban Growers Collective just won the Chicago Prize. I, what is that? $10 million? Um, to build in a to to build out their um, urban farm, um, actually to to call it an urban farm is actually to miss it's it's a misnomer. It's it's much it's a much larger endeavor than that. You know, it's a sort of total total cycle. Uh, you know, food endeavor, um, employment endeavor. Um, you know, so there there are all sorts of components to Green Era. So visit Urban Growers Collective on Facebook and their website. You know, to find out more about the um, the project, the Green Era project that they're working on. Um, and, and, you know, what they're going to be doing with that Chicago Prize. We, we really look forward to uh, speaking with Erica to kind of figure out what's happening there. Um, so um, beyond that, you know, next up on my reading list or currently on my reading list, Ella Baker and the Black Freedom Movement by Barbara Ransby. Um, you know, we uh, just, we, we pick this up at Co-op for Live, the Cooperation for Liberation Study and Working Group. I will tell you about that endeavor later in the broadcast. Um, as part of our next reading, but we will be putting a pause on it because uh, Co-op for Lib is a, a fully um, democratic consensus-based space. And, you know, we, we found some missteps in how the title came to the floor and how it moved through our process. So because we are democratic, we're pulling that title back because we want to make sure that we give every member an opportunity to review and ensure that that title is the one we want to proceed with. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't start it. Um, and certainly, you know, um, I'm, I'm a 
chapter in, or two in. So, you know, I'll probably be continuing and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back. Um, yeah, Ella Baker and the Black Freedom Movement. Um, I am, am, you know, I, I certainly love histories and I love biographies. And certainly, you know, I, 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 am, I, I dig on, on Mama Ella, the ancestor Ella. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I was tempted, though. I was tempted to skip to the end. Because the, the 12th chapter is where Barbara Ransby just kind of sketches out um, what might be a political philosophy of Ella Baker. Like, you know, I mean, effectively, if you if you gave it a subtitle, it'd be like being Ella. Um, and I was tempted to skip to the end. I didn't, but I'm tempted um, because I, I am always interested in the intricacies of what, you know, um, what people's philosophies of life are. And, you know, I, I certainly think... Um, um, Dr. Ransby, you know, having studied as long as, uh, long as uh, she has for this text, um, has something to say about that. And I look forward to getting to chapter 12 to figure that out. Um, so uh, make sure that you pick up Ella Baker and the Black Freedom Movement at your uh, nearest Black bookstore um, and or independent bookstore um, and or non-Amazon bookstore. Um, so yeah, you know, be sure to take, check out that title. Um, we also would really... Um, suggest you go ahead and uh, check out the, um, if you've not looked at the Worker Co-op Conference, um, U.S. Federation of Worker Cooperatives, um, their recent keynotes, um, particularly the keynote from uh, Maurice Mo Mitchell. Um, you know, I was, I was really, um, you know, heartened by the, the, to hear Working Families Party speaking as highly as they do of cooperative models and the opportunity to kind of engage uh, cooperatives politically or just kind of, or, or, to, or to think about the sort of political dimensions of cooperatives um, as a part of the, the electoral work that they're doing, right? You know, um, so I, I really look forward to seeing what develops from that. You know, um, that that's that's sort of a, some some new terrain um, that I've seen, you know, politically. Um, but you know, it, it, it's it's uh, but connecting the dots, right? The solidarity economy. We are connecting all of these different dots because the economy is the total cycle: production, um, exchange, uh, consumption, uh, and and resource and allocation. All of those things, all of the economic activities we do every day, all of the things that bring us into relationship with each other and in our, our environment, our communities, our neighborhoods, that is the economy. We are the experts of that economy. And so, yes, I really look forward to um, all of the things that we are able to do in that context. Um, with that stated, uh, I am uh, really looking forward to uh, bringing forward our, our guests this evening. and. You know, um, we're going to be speaking with Tribe Co-Create. And because I am not on the correct screen, you're going to have to bear with me uh, because I want to make sure that I get all of this right. Um, yes. So we're going to be speaking with um, Bianca Shaw and Angelica. I'm going to give me Angelica's last name right now. That's Dela Cruz. Boom. You know, uh, fortunately, since they are off camera, you didn't hear that hint that I got. So I appreciate, uh, you know, that that secret secret supply. Um, Bianca Shaw and Angelica Dela Cruz of Tribe Co-Create. Um, so Tribe Co-Create a a a co-working and healing space, an an innovation an innovation and healing space um, there in the Bronx. Um, so I, I'm 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 actually going to go ahead and 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 expand the space because um, I've got Bianca's intro here, but I don't have Angelica's on my screen, and so uh, because the, because of that, I want to make sure that I give them space to speak and intro themselves. Um, uh, to that end, I am going to uh, go ahead and bring um, Bianca and Angelica onto the screen. Uh, Boom. Welcome to the Ujima Hour, Bianca Angelica. You are live. Hi. Hi. Hello, hello. So um We are so excited to be here. <laughs> yes, and I and I certainly am excited to host. Um so give us um, you know, let's kick it off. Um, Bianca and then Angelica, why don't you go ahead and intro us to who you think you are? Oh, I love this. Okay, so I know that I am a queer, black, abundantly bodied femme from the Bronx, New York, born and raised. Um, my people are from the beautiful island of Antigua. I'm from Afro-Caribbean all the way. Um, I am a radical social worker, a healer, an abolitionist, 
Um, a lover of my people, a truth teller. Um, I'm fly as fuck. <laughs> um, yes, I am bold. I'm radiant. I'm loving. Um, and I'm just all around dope. Um, and really, really someone who is committed um, to the healing of my people that includes financial abundance and liberation. Yes, for that, Bianca. I'm going to double, triple snap <laughs> on that. That was beautiful. Hi, thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Angelica, um, and I am a broke, <laughs> um, you know, woman from the Bronx. I am a black Dominican, um, born, you know, born in the Dominican Republic, and I migrated here from um, the Dominican Republic when I was uh, five. I am a gatherer of my people. I am a joy feeder. And, you know, thank you so much for, for having us in this space. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Excellent. Excellent. Well, much appreciated. Yes. Um, you know, I don't begin with that a question enough. You know, back when I was on the poetry boards, we had a, a group poem that we did, which was like, who the hell do you think you are? And it was the, the, the desire to bio, you know, using sort of poems and just kind of, you know, digging into that question. So I appreciate We're going to steal that. Yes. <laughs> We're going to liberate it. Yes. I love that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All things towards liberation. Um, so yes. um, take us up the runway. Um, take us up the runway from what in your life brings you to the moment where you are where you say hey you know tribe co-create is something that we should do tribe co-create is something that that sh that that should be in this world uh walk us up the runway from you know how you get from where you are through your life to this point Oof. yeah absolutely i can start yeah. uh, i love this question because it always like brings me back to my own roots um, and so I started in my who the hell do I think I am naming that my people are from Antigua, right? And my my parents came here in the 80s, right? Smack dab in the middle of the crack academic, epidemic, um, living in the South Bronx. Um, and my people are survivors and doers, right? Um, they are people who, like many of us, have been taught by capitalism that we need to work really hard in order to survive and that we have to depend on a system to do that. And so I really grew up with that understanding that I needed to be a model minority, um, that I needed to work my behind off, that I needed to be perfect, uh, and that I needed to depend on somebody else giving me a paycheck. Um, until I got really politicized <laughs> and <laughs> until I started leading on community um, and really just started dreaming, right? Which I think capitalism, in my experience, has really robs me from the ability to dream. And so I got brave and bold and started dreaming and started wondering, like, what else is there in the world for me? Um, and I also found community. Um, Angelica and I actually met at a nonprofit job that we had where we realized that we were giving all of our passion, our energy, our innovation, our intelligence um, to work that we really cared about, but work that ultimately didn't care about us. Um, and so we started having some conversations and we were like, I'm magical and I'm really popping. <laughs> I have great ideas and I'm giving all of these ideas to a system and to an institution um, that gives me a measly paycheck and really doesn't even think about my own identities and how I'm being harmed by being in this work. Um, and so we really found each other and we found a number of our other coworkers who were sort of going through the same thing of like, I'm bringing so much to this space. I wonder what it would look like if I was able to just give this to my community, right? Like if I was just able to exchange this en energy amongst us and it didn't have to have a grant behind it, and it didn't have to have someone's approval behind it. It could just be like something that we're building together. And so we got really curious. We actually started holding, um, we're trained in restorative justice from community. And so we started holding circles together. We were taking back our time. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> in our living rooms, don't forget that. In our living rooms. It started in the it started in the staff office. We were like, yeah, we're having a meeting, but actually we were like vision boarding together and like strategizing together. And at first, you know, we all had these ideas of how we were gonna get free. Um, Angelica was gonna start like a daycare. I was gonna do all this other stuff for my community because we saw what our community needed and we wanted to do it. And then I was like, you know, these are all really great, but 
I don't know the first thing about starting business because I don't know other people around me <laughs> who are living this like li- life of liberation, who are who are business owners, who are doing their own thing. I actually don't know pe- folks like that. I was like, where am I going to get the the resources, the knowledge, um, the money to do these things without again having to go back to like an education system and rack up more student loan debt? Like, how can I just do this, right? Um, and so I was like, that's what we need. We need a space where folks who have all this like talent, passion, innovation, um, commitment to community, um, shares values with us. Like we need a space where we can really like create together, um, where we can really like heal from capitalism together because ooh, Lord, capitalism be be trying us. (laughs) And um, a place where we can really just like share, right? Um, We can trust ourselves more than capitalism. Oof, I love I love when Angelica says that, right? Like we need to work on trusting ourselves more than we trust capitalism. Um, because that that trauma is so deep. Um, thank you for that, Angelica. And yeah, we just needed so it really started off with like we kind of use the the model of co-working um, really because we knew that like people needed the space to come together. Um, and as we both said, we're from the Bronx, right? So we also recognize like there were no spaces in the Bronx for people to simply gather. Like people were doing that in their homes, which is cool. Um, but there wasn't actually a space for like innovation to happen. That that sense of like community building, there was no actual location for that to happen outside of like community gardens and community centers, like just a just a space for people to come. And so that's what we wanted to create. Um, and the idea was really to to hold that for folks and to really be like a source. Uh, relationship and community building and then like let people let people do what they always wanted to do what they always wanted to bring to their community um without having to do that in like white spaces without having to do that in like capitalist spaces without having to have anyone like really on their back um just really like bring the talents that they have to other people and like they decide how they want to exchange that uh, so yeah that's the tribe story <laughs> and what we've been focusing on up, up, um, more recently is really around like the ways in which we need to he- like we get to heal from capitalism that that interrupts our ability to be innovative to really trust ourselves to really get creative to put our stuff out there to to have a conversation about worthiness when it comes to the resources that we can offer folks so that's been our current focus um, but that's that that idea of like moving away from that is how we started and moving away from this money trauma that we were. Um, brought up. Would you like to expand on your your part in the story, uh, Angelica? Just you know, give it. Give- um, no, B- Bianca actually said it all. You know, for us, it's really been about reimagining and dreaming what tribe is going to look like, and and you know, it, this journey has been so long. We're so grateful for it because we actually got to not only, you know try to heal the community but heal ourselves first so we can bring that to the community and and so we could share our stories with the community about like the things that we've learned um throughout this journey so mm-hmm. so um i i was recently uh, doing a facilitation of this offers and needs market um or i was doing i was part of their facilitators training and i had an opportunity to drop my facilitation lineage And I realized that part of my facilitation lineage is the Rogers Park Community Peace Circle here in Chicago and Jennifer Vietz, you know, who facilitated that circle, who invited me into the circle at one point and said, hey, would you like to do a circle? And I was like, I don't know how. She was like, that's easy. Come on, just do it. (laughs) So that that was sort of my first opportunity to really get in front of people and to think to talk about questions that were in my head and share them with others and then have have the opportunity to kind of move around the circle. So talk about the role of both restorative justice and circle keeping in sort of um, how you have approached the development of Tribe. Wonderful. Oh, first of all, I love that connection. Um, and yeah, so Angelica and I, as I mentioned, used to work for a nonprofit that focused on um, alternatives to incarceration for young people and their families who have been impacted by mass incarceration and really all forms of oppression. And so um, restorative justice was a big part of our work. And we were lucky enough to be trained by folks out in Chicago too. Um, actually, the director of restorative justice at our organization is from Chicago and yeah. really got 
are trained in community, um, which I have to say we're so grateful for because restorative justice has been co-opted by the system and, and now is like being super institutionalized, right? <laughs> and so we're grateful for the ways that we were brought up in that work um, and want to pay respect to those folks. Um, and I want to say that the principles of restorative justice, the, the principles of um, really being community centered in the ways that we define our own problems and create our own solutions has been really important. Um, one thing about our work at, at Tribe, when we were even thinking about what is this cooperative going to look like, we really named our values. Um, and the way that we held those meetings was in circle, right? Like we really um, practiced like deeply listening and deeply speaking from a place of love and truth. Um, and we really defined like what are the values that are going to lead us? So different from other businesses that are probably starting up and thinking about, all right, what's the product that we're going to sell? What's the service? And how much money are we going to make? And how much, like, what's the delivery? and all that stuff. We actually went back. <laughs> right. We were like, okay, so how do, how how are we gonna um how are we really gonna embody radical blackness? <laughs> like, how are we gonna embody joy in our work, right? And like what are the programs and services and other facilitators that we want to bring in that will really um really connect to that? How do we make sure that the ways that we hold conversations and make sure that the roles that we play are really around like equity, right? Um, how do we bring our own identities and experiences and our own like issues around trauma and community and money? Like how do those show up in our work and the decisions that we make? And so we, we are so um, not critical, but intentional about the decisions that we make. And we always go back to this piece that relationships are the most important thing. Um, trust and honesty and love are the most important things. And so we haven't really been focused on money. Um, that hasn't been our attention from the very beginning. It's about how do we continue to build with our people? And that is what we lead by. And I think that's what has made us so successful um, just from a place of like, we have grown exponentially in like who we have in our village now um, and the people that we can lean on because we lead with our values first. And abundance for us isn't, you know, um, isn't about money. Abundance for us is really community. And like Bianca said, like we've really had to put, we, any time that we spoke, that we had a meeting, our values was the first thing. We would always go back to it and add things and remove <laughs> things and add, like it was just so magical. And, you know, again, for us, abundance is, is really community and community building and that trust in community. So. Yes. Um, so I know that, um, just looking over the sort of about us section of the site, right? You know, there's there's a um, there's a role uh, that Bianca's playing around visioning and planning. There's a role that uh, Noah is, is that correct pronunciation mm -hmm. playing around the uh, operations. Angelica, you're what, coordinating. I I bring people joy, yeah. honey. That's what I do. Okay, <laughs> I am a joy feeder. Okay, I'm gonna have to change Angelica's title. <laughs> Uh, so, I see, uh, boom. Uh, so how did you all get to the decisions around the roles that you occupy? And then, you know, um, I know I, I know that I, I, all, I am a sort of a, a tactician and an infrastructure developer, right? I come from an IT st strategy background. So like I immediately fall into operations and operations can be just a sort of work that people forget like has to happen. Like, you know, there's some timelines and there's some deliverables that you noted like how did you all decide the sort of division of responsibilities and how do you all kind of balance how that work happens i can add i can start with that um so ah, let me take a deep breath when i talk about like these nonprofits that we work for right um you know sometimes when not sometimes oftentimes um when you work for like nonprofits and capitalistic um organizations they tend to just throw you in roles that you don't even know how, have any idea what you're even doing with like no support, no nothing, right? They're like, oh yeah, go ahead, do this. With like, okay, so who's going to help me with this, right? They just, just throw it to you. Um, but like Bianca said earlier, like it was really about radical listening for us. It was really about like, okay, what are you good at? And how can I support you in that, right? We know that Bianca 
is she comes with the words. She she knows how to get money. So she going to break these grants. She she going to be she going she going to do the things to get tribe this money, right? She's going to be the one that's going to be out there talking about tribe. Me, I know that I love to bring community together. I love organizing events. I love, you know, I, I just love all the things around like event planning. Um, and Noah, she loves doing the operational stuff. She loves, you know, how do I fix this, this pipe that's going to be broken? How do I make sure that like my people are comfortable? So for us, it was always about, it was always about like listening to each other and like, how can I support you in this role that you're so great at? Not let me just give you this role. Hey, Angelica, go ahead and just, you know, sit in this panel. And I'm like, well, I don't really know how to bring the money in, you know? How, how can I do that? So for us, it was really like, okay, what are the areas that you're great at? What are the areas that you're good? And let's work with that. Let's put you in this role. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to throw you in this role and, you know, that's it with no backing, no support. So for us, it was really tapping into our power and like tapping into like what is it that that we what role we wanted to play at at, at tribe and how can we support each other in that role? Absolutely. Um, anything to add? What's that? Yeah. Come on. Um, yeah, I'll just add really quickly. I think Angelica summarized it so beautifully. Um, but something else that really came to mind was that one of our values is really like transparency and decision making. And so when we talked about our roles, we actually did like an activity together. We're also like really connected to facilitation, um, thankfully. <laughs> and so we held like our own retreats. And I remember Noah, um, who's not on the call today, but is one of our members, um, like asked the like, what is our why? Right? Like we all kind of agreed why we wanted try but like what's really behind your why and like if you had to play a role to make sure that tribe not only happened what but what like we had tribe all over the world right like what is the role that you want to play um for that to happen and so yes yeah, i think that we all because we're cooperative and we do share a lot of like responsibilities and values, like no one person does anything by themselves. We also recognize like what is going to be the motivator for me? What's going to keep me excited about this work? Um, what are the things that I'm really good at? Um, and how do we keep the lines of communication open? So although Angelica is like our events person is and is the gatherer of our people, um, we're always in conversation about what that looks like, right? Because I'm usually the one like brainstorming, like, oh, we should do this event and we should do that. And she's like, okay, got it. I'm gonna go get the people. And so we're always working together, but it really came from a place of like, what can I offer fully and deeply? Um, Cause we always believe in doing stuff from a place of passion. So that's very much connected to the roles that we have as well. Yeah, and we're tired of waking up to jobs that we just don't, we're not connected to or we just don't <laughs> care. We're not happy. We want it to be in roles that we're, we're actually going to be happy to wake up to and to go do. Yes, yes. That's true. We were, um, so my, with my colleagues at Co-op Co for Lib, Cooperation for Liberation Study and Working Group, that is the formation here that we have cultivated. Um, in order to develop a worker cooperative and ultimately really learn the process ourselves because there isn't really infrastructure here in which to do that. Um, mm. So, you know, we're kind of going through a process of self-education and just, uh, you know, discerning how we can build a, a process so that we can share it with others. Um, but to, to your point about sort of facilitation, we were joking because a lot of us have come from facilitation backgrounds. We were like, how many times are we going to use container in this meeting? You know, <laughs> like... <laughs> So, uh, so I will use container in this conversation. So you're building this container um, in which the co-working mm -hmm. space happens. You three are mostly holding the container. Um, what's the role of people who are coming and gathering at the space or gathering in the events? What, what are the role that the participants have in the community that you're creating? Yes. Um, thank you for this question as well. Um, so one of the things is that we are really holding a container and I actually love that you use that, right? Because we see ourselves as really like, we're just holding the space <laughs> and the, the magic that happens in that space, the creativity that happens in that space is really being led by community. Um, and so in the beginning, obviously to like get our name out there and to like build connections, we were holding a lot of events um, and really just like using our own like experiences 
with healing or experiences like, like with money and finances to like hold events and and to build those connections. Um, but not too long after that, um, folks thankfully were like so interested in our work and wanted to hold their own stuff and really do it in collaboration with Tribe. And so that has really been like our special sauce <laughs> is that we've created space um, for other folks to come in and offer their services to community. And oftentimes um, that has been offered really for free or at a low cost. And so we've had healers come in to do workshops around, you know, like chakras and yoga and Reiki. Um, we've had like soap making classes and like body butter classes and folks are learning how to do things. Um, we've done um, workshops around environmental justice. Um, we've done workshops around like what's happening in the Bronx and just like holding political spaces. But really the magic has been that folks are like, folks are hungry for space, which again, is not something that really exists in the Bronx. And so when we said that we were gonna hold this container of having a space and that this space was gonna be a liberation space, it was gonna be a healing space, it was gonna be a space that was safe for like, specifically for black and brown folks and also specifically for queer and trans folks, which, you know, right now the Bronx is going through gentrification, there's white folks all over, um, the Bronx has not traditionally been a, a space that has been safe for queer and trans folks. And so once we named what our values were and we led with that, um, folks were like, oh, I'm so interested in what you're doing. And this is so needed for, for, for me and my community. Can I do something? And of course we're like, yes, if you align with our values and you're for our people, yes. And so really we're, we're just holding and, um, facilitators are coming in and really offering things to communities, which makes it really community led. Yeah. And don't get it twisted. Just because you're community don't mean we're going to say yes. Because if you, don't, <laughs> if you don't align with our values, we say no real quick. And we are not afraid, okay, to say no. Are we yes, one of our values love? is love. keeping it real. Okay. <laughs> but it's a no for me, dog. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. A container has boundaries and, you know, we hold them. That's yes. right. That's absolutely, absolutely. So, um, so there's there's this original vision of um, of of holding. So you have you have pop up space originally, and then you had this vision of potentially having a physical space. Um, it's a mm -hmm. container. Uh, container. Um, How's that vision pivoting? How's that vision sort of responding to the moment? You know, what's 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 evolving here? You know, for this this the the, the future iterations of this of tribe. So I, I I would say that the universe always protects us. Um, we are so in alignment with things because we were actually, our original goal was to get a physical space. And um, we were looking at buildings, uh, we were looking at grants to get, um, you know, we were looking at doing a, a crowdfunding campaign to get money uh, for a space. But then COVID happened and it kind of like slowed us down um, a lot. And we were like, oh my God, if we would have gotten a building, we would have been like, you know, we would have been stuck and we would have had to close. So right now what's happening is that um, me, Bianca and Noah are really reimagining what it looks like to hold space virtually at the moment. Um, and you know, what, what, what does that, you know, we've been holding space for, you know, since March and it's been going beautifully, um, but we really had to take a break, not only, um, from tribe, but we have to take a break to really reconnect back with ourselves and really reconnect back with our values. Um, so right now we're just in the reimagining phase and we're, we're in the, the phase of um, what is it gonna look like virtually um, right now for at least a couple of months or a year, whatever that looks like. Um, so we can not, you know, not only take care of ourselves, but take care of community as well. Um, but we, well, the universe protects us because right now we, you know, and, and just, what, like two days ago, we had an email. Someone was like, hey, are you interested in this space? Um, and we're like, oh, not right now. You know, <laughs> the universe tells us no. But we really end up reimagining right now what it, looks, what, what it would look like to, um, to really continue this online. Because people need it and want it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, 
in terms of the the shift to virtual space, I, I I know that with Co-op for Lib, we we also had. So I'm also a very relational, place based organizer. Uh, you know, in in com- in community, I also am a hugger, right? You know, so um, so there, there's that. So I, we love a hug. I'm very <laughs> deprived right now. You know, I mean, I'm doing a lot mm-hmm. of virtual hugs. You know, what I mean, a lot a lot of air hugs, all that good stuff. Um, but we we did we had the had this uh, physical space, and there's. Um, there are layers to the physical space, right? You know, so there's there's just being together in, in a space with each other, but there are other things that are happening there. You don't realize they're happening until you have to shift them um, to the virtual space. And then you have to like substitute, like, you know, I'm trying to bring in the digital, the virtual post-its and the Google slide decks and things like that to make up for like the things that we used to do physically. So I'm, I'm wondering sort of about how, um, how you all have have had to evolve as you've moved things virtually. What does facilitation look like and how has it changed for you all? Oh, yes, talk about it, Mike. So, so, so true. Um, And same, Um, I'm not actually someone, I don't identify as a hugger, but I do recognize how much like community and being with people. One thing I love is like being a witness to black joy and black queer joy. I just love seeing my people happy, right? And I I need to see the expressions on their face. I need to see them like in their their body, right? and that's been really hard to accomplish online. Um, some of the things though that we have really been doing is like just really getting creative about how we hold space for people virtually. And so we've actually been holding in the beginning of this pandemic, we held a lot of just like talks, right? Just for folks to just like share how they were feeling, um, really for people to just like gather. Um, thank goodness that we do have a background in facilitation because that means that we get to be really intentional about like the kind of questions that we ask um you know like we we love a breakout room we like creating that intimacy for people right that virtual intimacy um and also just like allowing other people to co-facilitate that and to hold space and to share um what it has looked like recently and probably what it will continue to look like is that we'll hold things on different platforms. So we've been doing a lot more like Instagram lives. um, And we also have been doing like the post-its and um, getting really creative and also like learning from other people, right? Because I don't think that we know exactly what this looks like and what will will always land with folks um, because people are zoomed out. And so that's also a reality. but I've been fortunate enough to, you know, like be a part of a, a lot of different spaces online and just like taking notes from other people who are having breakout rooms where people get to color together or like share a really dope playlist with each other. Um, yeah, just like finding other ways that people can feel really connected um, and really just like acknowledging like that this. This is what we can offer right now, but it doesn't come close to like that hug or like that side conversation or like the side eye you give people when somebody says something and you both agree about it, right? Like those just little moments Um, or like the awkwardness. Like I'm such an uh, introvert and I remember telling one of my friends, like I I miss the thrill of awkwardness. Like I'm like, oh my God, this is so awkward. I don't know. (laughs) Like I don't get that anymore because now I can just turn off my camera. (laughs) So just like (laughs) <laughs> just like naming what's coming up for people, <laughs> I think it's also just it. And, you know, another one of our values is just like bringing a lot of laughter and joy. And so, you know, Angelica's always good for like breaking out in song and dance at any moment. And I think, <laughs> I think you know, we just, um, people just appreciate the authenticity that we bring. Um, and so we always just leave with that. But I, I will say that it, it definitely has been hard and we've had to get creative about how to hold space um with folks so um so maybe let's shift to outcomes right so you you're developing this innovation and healing space you're bringing people together you're holding containers um what are you seeing as the 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 you you, and you've all you've talked about you know being able to bring people together in, in such a way that um that the things that they're passionate about, they can dig into and people can encourage them around. And, and, and I, I, I'm pretty sure that I've, I've saw, seen that, y- you know, just this notion that um, you want to have a space where people are encouraged in the things that they want to do. Um, mm-hmm. So really, so talk about what are some of the outcomes that you're seeing of the space or, or folks who are participating in this space? What's coming up for them or what are they, 
what are they say, saying about their participation in the space? I just want to brag a little bit and say that people love us. <laughs> Love us, really love us no. and we love them wholeheartedly right back <laughs> um and so yeah some of the outcomes that we've seen from our space some of the things that folks have said to us um and really affirmed us in is one that we are creating a space in the bronx that feels very radical um that we're not just like creating a traditional co-working space or like a community center that like leading with our values and with our politics um are very radical and appreciated and that leading with like authenticity is also something that's appreciated so we are not just like owners of a space who are in the background like we're very much in it with our people right like we're very much we know people personally now we check in we like say happy birthday to folks who like came to one of our events like we are very much connected um and we pride ourselves on that not just because it's like a business tactic um because we actually are committed to relationship building and so we we do that very well um and i again the other part about folks in the bronx um one thing about people who have been oppressed and marginalized is that we are the most magical creative innovative beautiful people um and so a lot of times folks have been sitting on so much they they are artists they are dancers they're healers um they know how to make shit out of nothing right <laughs> like they just they just have all this talent and ability and honestly have been like sitting on it haven't had a space to really like show it off or put it into practice or to talk to other people about what they're interested in and if they have been doing that they've been doing that outside of their community they had to like go to some art center in manhattan in order to find people who have are interested or in brooklyn stuff like them yeah. right or like brooklyn which is you know a gentrified hot spot in new york city right now and so just this idea that we can like hold a, a movie night and people can come together or we can like, you know, do our arts and crafts night, like just things that seem so simple. Um, we, we realize like how much that connection um, is just so important. And so, yeah, like I think that when people come to our space, are at one of our events, even if we're not the ones facilitating, um, again, we lead with our values. And so you're welcomed. You're, you're a part of the tribe, right? You're a part of the family. Um, we are warm. We're so loving. Um, we're down to earth. Like we real Bronx people. And so there's no code switching. There's no, hey, welcome to our space. It's like, hey, girl, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a year. <laughs> and so I think we lead with that and and folks really appreciate that. And we're just we're just very transparent. Um we you know, we share our struggles, we share our accomplishments, we are very open to to folks. Yeah. And so I think I think our the biggest outcome that's come out of tribe is that people are now putting actual action into their dreams. Like they're actually like Hmm. I, 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 this is my dream. Let me see what I can do. Not even let me see, let me do the things that is going to take me there. That is going to make my dream come true. And that's because we've, uh, we've created this safe space for them to do that. We've actually, we've, we've reimagined with them, you know, and just yes. reimagining with them. is just like, Oh my God, I have a support system that's actually helping me do this and create this. So let me go for it. So that's like the biggest outcome for us. It gives me chills, honestly. Yeah. Can, can I say something really quickly? Um, I know we probably have to move on, but I just want to like give an example of that. Um, we were, we were hosting an event and like met these two young, um, Latinas from the Bronx who were very interested in bringing like healthy plant-based cooking to their community. They had like this idea of like holding workshops for young people and like, you know, doing cooking demos and all this other stuff. And they didn't know where to start really. Like they had all this stuff, they're super dope. And so we were supporting them. We were like, oh, let's help find you like a kitchen where you could do that. Or let's connect you to other chefs that we know because we've started to meet people. And so they started to do that and was looking for a space to hold an event and they couldn't find a space because things are expensive. And we were like, okay, we don't have a kitchen, um, uh, 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 like a, a kitchen, like a commercial kitchen, but we have a really nice roof. <laughs> <laughs> and you could use our kitchen and they held their first event and like sold out and held like this super beautiful event 
on the top of our roof in the South Bronx that like we helped decorate and it was it was gorgeous it was beautiful and I think that is the beauty of Tribe is that like we're really supporting people and actualizing their dreams by any means necessary right and like we didn't we didn't ask for nothing and we maybe got a good plate out of it um, but that was it <laughs> and it was it was so dope to see and then they like have gone on to like be at pop ups and have just done so much stuff and like I don't say that to take credit I just say that to say like there's community right and like when community's there for each other like things are possible and so that's what we live by I love us for real (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so I was having a conversation with someone who developed a cooperative here in the Chicagoland area and you know when I talked to them about their use of the cooperative model they have a really complex you know multi-stakeholder cooperative um you know one of the the pieces of feedback that they offered was that like if they were starting over they wouldn't use the model (laughs) you know so i'm wondering you know about just your experience with this thing called cooperatives um you know if you were starting over would you still choose this as the pathway that you travel to bring this idea into existence 1,000 times over. Absolutely, we would use cooperative because everyone gets to go. <laughs> Every single person gets to go. And I, I'm, I'm using mo- momentum language, but you know, e- everyone gets to go. Everyone gets a chance to have their voice heard and when they probably never even had a voice. So uh, I, we would use this a thousand times over. We would never go the capitalistic way. We would always go the cooperative way. Oh, yeah. A thousand times. Yeah. I want to just second that. And I want to say that using a cooperative model, doing anything that is radical or different from the ways that traditionally ha- things have been done takes a lot of work and intention. And so, again, we lead with our values. I don't think I can say that enough, that when we are intentional, when we're leading with our values, it actually means that we have to question ourselves so much, that we get to question ourselves. Let me say it like that, right? That when we are making decisions, when we're talking about money, when we're talking about who's responsible for stuff, um, when we're talking about how do we handle conflict and, like, issues in the workplace and all that stuff that we really have to question like which brain are we using (laughs) to do that are we using uh like capitalist ideals or are we really being connected to our values and that is work like i there's there's no sugarcoating that that is work um it takes a lot of slowing down it takes a lot of questioning and interrogating and so yes it does make it hard right it's much easier to just say like we're just we're gonna have someone who's just gonna make all the decisions and we're just gonna move like this because i said so um and there's definitely been moments like that at tribe like again we're transparent and we're, we're honest about our own journey um, but we are committed to the long haul, not just love the success of our business, but like what we are offering into community. And so we're always thinking about that and it's hard, but it's worth it. To yeah. us. And one of the things that we really go to is that if we're doing it by ourselves, it's not big enough. Right. So our dream about how we want tribe, where we want tribe to go, where we want community to go is huge. It's, it's literally like insurmountable. So we will always go the cooperative way. Absolutely. Um, when you all are doing the work you're doing around Tribe um, or, you know, in this, the spaces you're facilitating, do you ever think of the, 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 fra- the phrase economy or a word economy? Or do, does, does economy ever come up in your mind? I'm just wondering how people are approaching economy, you know. I, I know. We are economy, honey. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm laughing because I don't think, okay, so I'll say this. I don't think the word economy comes to mind, um, but we, we are always talking about money and and wanting to like, I mean, I think in our personal lives, like we, we are in practices of solidarity economy, um, of like building that out with like other black folks, black women in particular. Um, and, you know, Tribe started from a place of like wanting to like just say F you to capitalism and working. <laughs> and so economy, I, I think it, it like it brings up so much. And so something that we do talk about is like money trauma. Um, and healing from that and being in a space of financial abundance and knowing that like 
our financial wellness and healing is connected to all parts of our healing, which is not something that I don't think either one of us grew up with, with really understanding. And so we're always in those kind of conversations um, and really thinking about like, you know, dreaming of like having land in another place and like really building a tribe that's like outside of America. But that's another story for another day. <laughs> it's just, that's, that's, how we, that's how we talk about, that's how we, we are often talking about like, what can we build? Um, which means that we're dis- we're dismantling a lot of what we know to really like imagine something new yeah so um my favorite um conversation around money trauma was with Yaveh Holtz who talked about developing rudical gathering rudical gathering was a susu so they so uh Yaved had developed the susu a money sharing you know um it, uh, system you know um association of sorts right um, but the rudical gathering method was that like they had all these rituals around how they would bring the money to the space. So, you know, you mm-hmm. kind of had to like do some cleansing of the money. You had to do some, you know, you, you had to speak some things over the money to put it into the pot. So it's like, hey, you know, we're bringing this money together. And not only are we unpacking, you know, or and, and sharing amongst ourselves, we're unpacking, you know, again, that money trauma. So uh, are you all you all are doing some things like that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> a thousand percent. Okay. Listen, we we have um yeah, so we are fortunate enough really to be a part of a, a solidarity economy um that was really been happening for years and has supported women in particular. Um and same thing, we we have been it's been a new journey for us, but it has taught us so much about um, money trauma, right? Like what comes up for other people, what has come up for ourselves, um, what it really means to be in the practice. Because I think something that we've experienced is that like most of the black folks that we know, the folks who are like suffering through capitalism are always like talking about what it means to get free and what that could look like. And it's always like a far off conversation. Like, oh, this is what we're going to get to. And I'm interested in what we can do right here, right now. <laughs> so we, Angelica and I have really been in this practice of being a part of a loom. Uh, and it's, it's very similar, right? That we talk about money um, as energy and have really been moving away from what we have learned about money to be something that's evil that's only in the hands of evil folks um and like what money can look like in the hands of peacemakers of healers of weavers of dreamers of folks who are really committed to community building um and really like speaking life into that right and like really thinking about money as energy um and what we can do with it so that's how we have been practicing solidarity economy we really call it a solidarity economy because it also is rooted in in values um, and spirituality, um, and comes from a place of like, we are deserving of abundance and we don't have to wait for any system. We get to create that for ourselves and with each other. So Noah's going to build us a whole little community. (laughs) (laughs) Noah's also a builder. She's learning a lot about carpentry. And so we're like, okay, Noah, you build the house. Bianca, you're going to do the Reiki and the healing and the facilitating. Angelica, you're going to bring the joy. Like, what, the things that we have are beyond money. <laughs> like, the things that we offer are beyond money. And not only are we going to have the financial abundance to create the life that we want, but we bring so much else to the space. Um, so, yeah, we are dreaming and doing. <laughs> we're going to be we gonna be in our own little community when we 50, okay? Now, what the <laughs> With this See, y'all are welcome. <laughs> all right. I, I, will, I will whisper it quietly, you know, that there is a community that you can go and visit and learn about. You know, you might not oh, be able to right. there, but you can go learn about it. Tell right. me in my Tell ear, me Mike. Tell me in my ear. Tell me. <laughs> uh, no, um, so um, I, I, will, I will close with this. Um, so there's the segment of a quote from Alice Walker at the end of Angelica's bio on the site that I finally got to, right? You know, that we should all look closely at the present we are constructing and it should look like the future we are dreaming of. You are dreaming of, so, yes. What is the future that you are dreaming of? We just said it, y'all. We're going to have a community, okay? A community, our own little island. Where it's only nothing but black folks, okay? Listen, we're gonna be doing susu. That's how we're gonna be taking care of each other, and we're gonna be in, we're gonna be in cooperative. All right, we're gonna be our island is literally going to be 
a cooperative. I want to be in a community with like-minded people who are not scared to dream and put action behind that dream. And that's going to be our island. That's going to be our community. We're going to be raising each other's children and creating generational wealth for them and for their children's children. And I just can't wait. And we're actually trying to build a shuttle to go to Mars and do that because we can't, we're tired of Earth already. We're tired, tired, okay? But um, yeah, that's that. That is my favorite, favorite quote of all times. And... You know, I, I can't stress enough that we really are constructing the future that we want to live in. We are actually in practice of that every single day, every moment of our lives. And like, I'm just so blessed to have Bianca and Noah and my other community, you know, my, my other family around me that that's helping me create that. What does tribe need now? Ooh. Um, what is tribe? First of all, I just want to say, uh, I just want to second everything Angelica say and say that we, our future looks like joy and liberation. Um, and what does tribe need now? Um, tribe, we're really like wanting it, wanting to deepen our relationships with community. And so because our community can be so expansive now, because we're doing everything online, um, Angelica and I were actually just reimagining Tribe the other day. And we are looking for folks who can offer their talents, passions, energies um, to hold space for folks. Um, particularly black and brown folks, um, for queer folks, for trans folks. And so you're, if you're interested in collaborating with us to hold space, to hold events, to offer services, um, slide in our DMs, send us an email to do that. Um, and also if you want to um, donate funds, right, to support this space that is around healing our people, that is around creating safety, um, that is moving towards liberation, um, feel free to send us funds. <laughs> Right. If you believe in paying our, our facilitator, then our oh, absolutely for their time. Yes. Yeah. Nothing is nothing yeah. Is yeah, yeah, we definitely believe in paying folks for our time because our folks are, again, people who have been historically marginalized and disenfranchised. And so even when we didn't have any money, uh, when Tribe didn't have any money, we were like, we're going to give you some money, right? Because you're, what you're offering is definitely worth it. And so, yeah, pay, pay folks for the work that they do. Um, and that's what we need. <laughs> we need community. Oh. Uh, I said we need community. Yes. Um, uh, an earlier segment um, in the summer with Lasaya Wade of Brave Space Alliance. Are you all familiar with Brave Space Alliance here in Chicago? No. Okay. No. no. No problem. No. Uh, that that then yes. Um, I you know perhaps I'll make that connection. Uh, Brave Space Alliance is our Black Trans Power Building you know project. I'm going to call it. I called it a mutual aid project earlier, but you know they're definitely a power building project. Um, you know, so yeah, um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make some introductions there, but yeah, you know, I, I, I certainly think that there are ways that, you know, um, tribe and brave space can share, um, you know, brave space recently assumed control of, um, what was floods hall, which was formerly what the office space for where the cold event collaborative was housed. Um, but they are, you know, because their programming has expanded, they, you know, have the capacity to take over that floor now. So. Um, that's what they're going to do, um, and so yeah, oh. you know they, they yeah they, they're doing some some fantastic work. So you know I I would definitely would like to make that introduction. Um, yeah, yes, and and I want folks to know. Make sure that you check out tribecocreate.com. www.tribecocreate.com, uh, where you can find more information about Tribe Co-Create. Um, and, um, you know, before we kind of do our formal closeouts, I do just want to uh, let folks know um, about Co-op for Lib, uh, Cooperation for Liberation Study and Working Group. Um, we are coming up on our um, biweekly sessions um, this Sunday, 3 to 6. Uh, so you can find us on Cooperation for Liberation um, and on, on Facebook. Uh, so feel free to visit there. You'll, you'll see the, the dates and time for the session. You'll see the Zoom link for registration. Um, we... Uh, we We'll be discussing the introduction for Ella Baker, but as I mentioned, because we are a democratic space, we're going to review that decision to make sure that it was, uh, you know, fully in line with our values, uh, because values has been present in this conversation. 
<laughs> so um, do uh, make sure that you go ahead and check out uh, Cooperation for Liberation. Um, and I will uh, hand it to the members of Tribe to ask if there is anything else that you want to leave folks with, anything that did not get discussed um, that you really, really want to make sure shows up in this conversation. Yeah, vote, 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 vote. Please, <laughs> please, please, please vote. Votes like your life dependent on it because it really does. Vote. vote, vote. Uh, thank you for that reminder, Angelica. <laughs> um, I thank you, Mike, so much for having us here. I'm really holding space for us to share. Um, my only thing to, to leave off is to remind folks that, like, pleasure, joy, and liberation is their birthright. Um, and to go after it at every single moment of the day because you deserve. That's it. <laughs> uh, yes, to, to Angelica's point, you know, yes, uh, do vote. Um, I sent a child off to college recently in Hiram, Ohio, um, which is not the blackest part of Ohio. Um, and so, you know, um, recently at, at, uh, at the house, we've received um, the voter registration card for that child turning 18 and saying, hey, you know, um, it's time for you to register and get voted. And so I, I sent the snapshot to, uh, to her and, you know, and she was like, no, I was like, it's what adults do. And she was like, I'm just playing, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, I'm sending her to I because, yeah. mm-mm. <laughs> yeah. Get, get your mail in ballot you know i've heard they're a little sketchy now it's, you know not gonna say what, yeah but you know yeah get the mail in ballot get it sent to Hiram. send it back in ideally the post office is functional and up to par and you know we will see we will see yes keep hope alive yes and sending you blessings mike because woof. <laughs> if all else fails we have a tribe in mars Sorry. yes <laughs> Boom, boom. That is what. Thank you so much for this. Thank you all very much. Uh, it has been you know, a pleasure having you on the segment this evening. Um, I really thank you for, for taking the time to drop in with us. And uh, yes, I look forward to um, you know, connecting the tribe to any other networks that I'm plugged into and, uh, yeah. and you know, sharing resources in the future. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care. All right. Bye. Thank you Bye. all. Bye, guys. All right, folks, uh, that concludes this segment of the Ujima Hour. Um, I just want to, you know, make sure that I plug into the schedule. Um, so, yes, we've just had uh, uh, Bianca Shaw and Angelica de, Cru de, de la Cruz. Um, whoop, I shouldn't have done that. Um, on the segment this evening. Um, so I really appreciate Tri for joining us. Uh, so that concludes our September segment of the Ujima Hour. In October, uh, really looking forward to Eric Jackson of Black Yield Institute. Um, November, Malikia Johnson of the Take Care of Each Other World Tour, whom you heard mentioned. Oh, no, actually, you didn't hear mentioned. Um, they were mentioned in the pre-conversation. Um, and then in December, uh, finally, Alita Ture of Parable of the Sower Intentional um, Community Cooperative. Um, so come back, you know, come back next month. Um, come back in October so we can uh, dig into what's happening with Black Yield Institute. Um, and we, as I mentioned, we're coming up on our 20... Um, our 2021 segment. So we're coming up on the, the period where um, I'll be sending out invitations to folks for 2021. Um, if there is someone that you think should be covered on the Ujima Hour, um, who we have not had a conversation with, um, please do, um, you know, let them know. Let's plug in. Um, let's get them on the segment. Let's get them on the hour to have that conversation. Um, and, you know, let's get them introduced to uh, the, the wealth of opportunity and resources and community that is available at the Ujima Hour. Um, Ujima means familyhood. Ujima means cooperative economics. Uh, we are connected. We are in relationship. And I really appreciate you all for joining this evening. Until next month, um, I bid you peace. And uh, yeah, look forward to talking to you again. Good night, all.